What is up, Gig Nation? Welcome back to the channel. Now, I know what you're thinking. Did I just get deactivated from Uber Eats for canceling orders? The truth? I've been delivering with Uber Eats for a few months now, testing out the platform, and I've tested out just about every delivery app out there. Before I got started with Uber Eats, I honestly thought that I would not be making that much money on the app. All the other videos that I saw were really pessimistic. People made it sound like you're working for basically nothing. Uh, but then, mid-pandemic, I saw a couple of videos pop up on YouTube where people were making pretty good money and the tips were really showing up. So I downloaded it in Seattle, and it turns out the pay has been pretty good. Plus, Seattle's got a couple uh, promotions going on. Basically, the city of Seattle has decided that we our frontline workers and that means that we get an extra premium pay for deliveries it's two dollars and fifty cents on top of everything else so that makes the pay even better uh, but i have to say that even without that the tips have been pretty good and uh, you know it's been a better experience than i initially expected on the app but there have definitely been some quirks and one of those is the way that uber eats shows you offers the way that they kind of force you uh, to overlay their offers when they pop up in your app so that if you're on another app and delivering, it always pops up on your screen and you have to see Uber Eats. Basically, they want to be prioritized so that if you are multi-apping, you have to look at their offers. And even more than that, when an offer pops up and you're already in the middle of delivering an offer or it's a double order, you cannot see the destination on the map for the second offer. Uh, so that new offer that's popping up, let's say you're like two minutes away from the drop off, you're about to be done and Uber sends you that next offer. It's only gonna show you the total mileage. It's gonna show you the pay and the name and the address of the restaurant, but you don't really know where that restaurant's going to end up. So these two features cause some major issues you end up accidentally accepting offers on Uber Eats when you're on other apps doing something else, and you end up having to accept offers that you're not sure you want uh, because you're already in a delivery and you can't actually see where you're going to drop off. As frustrating as this is, it's definitely something that I wish Uber would change, but it has to in some way uh, kind of be a benefit for them. Otherwise, they already would have done it because they definitely have the ability to show you this on a map. They're just choosing not to. And that leads on my end to more offers canceled, which may be problematic. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. Can you get deactivated for canceling too many orders? So I've been doing some research. I've been talking to my subscribers, people that have been commenting on videos, telling me their strategies, talking to other Uber Eats drivers, and doing some research online through Reddit to see what actually happens if you cancel too many orders. Because what's going to end up happening is even if you do your homework, if you know your city well, you know where a lot of these addresses are, a lot of times you're just gonna have to accept offers that pop up and when you don't know exactly where you're going. You can do the best you can to limit uh, accepted offers when you can't see the map to just a certain distance and a certain pay, but at the end of the day, you really need as much of that information as possible up front and you're not gonna have it. So what is the cancellation rate threshold? What's gonna get you kicked off of Uber Eats? Uh, and how can you continue to cancel certain orders and still be confident that you're gonna be able to deliver food on the platform. So I started digging and I started doing my research to try and figure out what exactly is acceptable. And well, I really found a wide array of answers. Personally, I have canceled some orders myself. I've completed almost 100 at this point and I've canceled two or three. Uh, I've done a couple cancellations before I've arrived at the restaurant and this is probably the best way to do it from everything that I've heard. If you need to cancel, Sooner is better because you are, you know, as an Uber driver, even if you're not going to be taking this order, you do have to be thinking about the end customer. You want them to get their order as soon as possible. So if you're going to make a decision to cancel, you should do that as quickly as possible. And usually this means before you show up at the restaurant and as quickly as possible after you get the order in your app, look it up in the map, see where it's going to be, and then make that call quickly and then uh, kind of cancel that order quickly in the app. I've done this and I've also done the other method where I've actually showed up at the restaurant and I've had to call in the customer support to cancel an order. Surprisingly, that actually went pretty well. Customer support is pretty good with the Uber Eats app. Uh, in my case, I showed up to a restaurant and I was kept waiting for over 20 minutes. At that point, I called support, let them know. They actually put me on hold, called the restaurant to see what was going on and they couldn't get a hold of the restaurant. So when that happened, uh, they actually took the order 
off of the app for me and they gave me five dollars for my time which was very surprising uh, to say the least i just did not expect them to do something like that that's going to be a rare scenario that's probably something that you want to keep to a bare minimum you definitely do not want to cancel orders after you've picked up food after you've arrived at the restaurant you should keep this pretty low as well because um, you know at that point the customer has been waiting for a while and if you've already gotten to the restaurant and then you're canceling you're gonna make that customer experience pretty bad so I would say keep these to a bare minimum from what I've seen online researching and talking to other drivers most would agree with me after you get to the restaurant you really should not be canceling you should have a really good excuse to do so but before you get to the restaurant and right after you accept that order you actually are given quite a bit more leeway to cancel orders without getting in trouble and from what i've seen on this a lot of drivers are saying that they just cancel orders all the time uh, when they're not good you know they rack up like 10 20 30 40 50 a month of these cancellations other drivers try to keep this more measured they say you know one two maybe three out of a hundred orders they can cancel um, you know before they get to the restaurant shortly after they pick it up or whatever but they try and keep these metrics low so essentially uh, what most people are saying is that uber does not care too much about cancellations as long as you are early on in the delivery process but a lot of drivers that i've talked to and that you know i've read their posts online are saying they still try and keep this to a minimum and that's kind of the strategy that i've adopted I try and keep this uh, to a minimum. If I feel like I had to accept an order, um, you know, for whatever reason I was still on the app, something popped up and I wasn't sure where I was, turns out it's in the wrong direction, I can go ahead and plug that address into Google Maps, see where it's at, and cancel that quickly. And in that case, I feel like the customer experience is not dropping dramatically. I'm not really harming too much. And so it's not a big deal if I do that. I still try and keep those to a minimum just because. Um, I don't know if Uber is going to change the algorithm, if they're going to start deciding they want to deactivate people for this. It sounds like I can kind of get away with a lot of it, but in my uh, you know professional experience, having worked with a lot of these apps, it's always good to keep your metrics as high as possible and as you know uh, keep stuff like cancellations and dropped orders, stuff like that, as low as possible. And that leads me to the next point of this video. If you are worried about getting deactivated. Let's talk about the other things that you can do to make sure you stay on the Uber Eats platform. As far as cancellation, just keeping that rate you know, fairly low is gonna keep you safe on the app. You're gonna wanna make sure that all of your documents are up to date, your insurance and registration and your vehicle. Definitely don't be a jerk to anyone in the restaurant, uh, to any customers or to customer service. I have heard about people getting deactivated for being a jerk to customer service. I would recommend being as polite as possible. I know usually when you have to call into them, it's a time when you're frustrated, so it's easy to kind of let loose on someone else. These are not the people uh, to get mad at. Uh, these are the people to try and be friends with because they will help you out in certain scenarios. If you have an issue with the restaurant, one of the good things about the Uber Eats app is it actually allows you to give feedback on restaurants when you're in there. So you can let Uber Eats know and this kind of helps them uh, hold restaurants more accountable. I do really like this feature. That's definitely the better option as opposed uh, you know, to saying anything that could be construed as rude to someone that works at the restaurant you're picking up from. Make sure that you deliver your orders on time. This is really important, getting the orders to the customer quickly. You definitely don't need to break any traffic laws or put yourself in danger here, uh, but doing stuff like multi-apping and dropping off to another customer before your Uber Eats customer could get you into trouble. It's definitely tempting. It's something that I'm tempted by some of the times, but I would recommend avoiding it. And last but not least, keep those ratings up. Uh, this is going to be a metric that Uber Eats looks at anytime they're considering deactivation. They're going to wonder how well you're rated by those customers. Uh, and so, you know, this is going to affect potentially every other reason that Uber Eats has to deactivate you. So it's very important you keep it up. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Gig Nation for all of the latest gig economy news. And let me know what you're doing about your cancellation rate. How often do you cancel orders? Do you try and keep it to a low? Do you cancel anything uh, that you change your mind on and do you just not even worry about that? Or are you canceling no orders because you're scared of what Uber might do? Leave a comment down below because I'd love to hear about you know what everyone else is doing with regards to this issue.